Hi, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the All About Digital Marketing podcast. Today, I wanted to share something because it came up on my radar uh, earlier this week, a couple of days ago, and it really, really rang home. It hit me, it hit me hard, and I thought of all of you guys listening, and I wanted to bring this to your attention. Now, I don't know if any of you look or read or follow Seth Godin online, but I highly recommend it. He's a phenomenal marketer. I find him kind of an interesting guy. But one of the things that Seth does, and he's always done for a long time now, is he has his own blog. And his blog is very different to a lot of marketers' blogs. He's not creating a blog that is hugely filled with long written articles that are you know, highly sensitive to SEO or to particular keywords trying desperately to get traffic. His blogs some days are a couple of lines, very, very short. But what he does do usually is pretty much speak what's in his head, what he's thinking about, or something in particular that's gotten to him or that he's been looking at recently. And I like his style of blogging. I like the style of quick, fast, but more importantly, very consistent. And that brings me on to his blog, I think, on the 2nd of Feb, which was Chasing the Cool Kids. Ooh, I like the sound of this. I started looking at this because, uh, again, it caught my attention, but mainly because of a tweet that he posted. The idea of the article is pretty simple, and we're going to drop a link into the show notes. I highly recommend you read it. It will take you the whole of 90 seconds to read this blog from its beginning to its end. But the advice that's in it is absolutely huge. When he's talking about the chasing the cool kids, he talks a little bit about, you know, get on MySpace, a bit of a take the mick from years ago, uh, better build your following on Facebook uh, and Pinterest definitely. And then what's your Twitter handle and will you be tweeting live and, you know, get on Quibi and build an Insta and a Finsta and Substack and, 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 and. This is a concept that way too many people unfortunately fall into and we don't really have a name for it here at Social Inc, but it's definitely overstretching and it's overkill for 95% of businesses, especially small to mid-sized businesses. Trying to be all things to all people on all platforms is a surefire way of not being able to do anything particularly well or particularly consistently. And this is where this whole article really makes sense. There's two things that he shared and that I really, really liked. The first one is, and sorry if I'm looking away from camera, if you're watching the video version of this, it's because I am reading to make sure that I don't get things right. Most platform has what he calls a long tail. And it means that a few people get the most traffic and everybody else gets very, very little. For the majority of us as small business owners, and I include myself in this, we have created content for years, but the majority of us get very little traffic. We are the rest of the people, not the 1% getting 90% of the traffic. We are, you know, the 90% the of the people getting 1% of the traffic between us. And what does that mean? Well, one of the stats he showed was to do with podcast downloads and distribution. The top 1% of podcasts will get 35K, roughly 30 to 35,000 downloads per episode. But actually the median, so the average for the majority of us that are podcasters, gets to about 124 downloads per episode. Now, I'm happy to say we're just slightly above that. Um, but again, we're a long way away from getting into that top 1%. And it's interesting because it got me thinking about a lot of small businesses who want to build a following on Instagram, who want to build a following on Facebook, who want to build a following on Clubhouse now because that's just become the latest new thing. And if you don't know what Clubhouse is, uh, feel free to check it out. But it's a audio only social network. That's the best way to kind of describe it. But again, what it's doing is it's really detracting our attention and it's distracting us from what necessarily we should be focused on. And as any small business, for us in particular, we believe this and this is how we work for ourselves and also for our clients. We believe that the number one asset that you should have is really your website. It's the one place that you actually own everything. It belongs to you. You're in complete control of it. And everything else that you're kind of doing around that is feeding into your website. So if you're creating good content, you want to have a copy of it on your website. If you're creating blogs, you want to have them published on your website. Why? Because that's the only thing that you really actually control 100%. What do I mean by control 100% or own 100% when I'm talking about these profiles? Facebook, Instagram, obviously belong to the same company. Uh, LinkedIn, 
Twitter, all of these systems and platforms can make changes at any time and you have no control over that. They can change the way that the algorithms work, how people receive content or how many people see content. All of those things are completely outside of your control. So rather than building your entire business on the back of a rented audience almost, and by the way, we run social media content for clients for Canada. Uh, social media content and campaigns for clients. I'll get there. But we do this a lot. But we always recommend that a client has a solid website, somewhere where they can collect email addresses. Again, an email list is something that you own. It's something that physically belongs to you. But all of these things take time and it's very, very hard to become part of that 1%. Something else to think about is it's very hard to become that overnight success that everybody reads about. And especially when it comes to channels like YouTube or podcasting, there's a very, very small percentage of people that reach that. And if you look at it and if you look into them properly, and I've spent quite a bit of time doing this, mainly because I enjoy watching YouTube videos and I like a few YouTubers in particular, but you'll notice that these guys have been at it for years, for years and years. They kept showing up and they kept getting involved. And this is where this blog from Seth really triggered me and I made me think I've got to talk about this. Persistence, consistency and patience. Knowing that you're going to need to keep turning up, and not unlike us with this podcast, you know, we could have done six episodes gone, wow, that didn't do us any, any good. We're not going to show up anymore. We're going to stop doing them. But anything that you're trying to do needs consistency. Set yourself a schedule. I'm going to go live every day. I'm going to go live once a week. I'm going to write a blog every week. Make that consistency appear and make sure that you stick to it. It's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to put things on the back burner. It's very easy to say, I'll come back to that later and then never actually come back to it. And that's a massive issue. So stick into that consistency. And the second part as well that he talks about, and again, it's really important, is patience. So many companies, especially in the small businesses, will try something and they'll try it once and then tell me that it doesn't work for them or for their business or for their industry even worse. None of that is true. We do live videos every single day. At the moment, this was our idea during lockdown, lockdown version three, whatever it is called now that we've referred to it as, but that's what we're doing. We're focusing on that and we're trying to make sure that we keep going live every single day. Why? Because that way people know about it. Why? Because that way people are involved in it. People could be part of that journey. But more importantly, from our side of things, we made an agreement, we decided, and we made that commitment with ourselves that this is what we were going to do. Sorry about that. <clears throat> very, very dry throat all of a sudden. I'd really recommend you check out this article by Seth, but more importantly, I'd recommend that you take the time to figure out what it is that you could consistently show up at, especially when it comes to your marketing, and that you review how it is that you're using your marketing and which assets you own and which assets you're renting. This may sound like a pretty silly exercise, but honestly, you might be very, very shocked as to just how many little small changes you could make that would help you to start building the core of your business. And like I said, for 99% of us, that will be our website. If you don't currently have a website, I highly recommend that you do something about that straight away. Running a business or building a business just purely by having a audience on Facebook or whatever it might be is not a long-term strategy. You're reliant 100% on this third-party platform. And should anything happen to that at any time, that disappears. Your business would disappear with it. And the second thing I would say to everybody is before you get carried away and think you've got to run off, get on TikTok and then now it's Clubhouse and God knows what it's going to be next week because it's a continuous flow of new platforms. Just remember this, you'd be better off doing one or two things consistently and continuing to show up patiently waiting for it to keep getting better and keep growing slowly but surely than you will be by running off into a hundred different directions and not actually finding what works and what doesn't for you. These things take time, these things take effort, and I know it can be disheartening when you first start doing it. I've written blog articles, you get no traffic, no one cares. Oh my God, these things happen. What you wanna do is to continue to do it. You wanna continuously be putting out that content. 
The more that you have out there, the more that people will start to figure out what it is that you're doing, the more people that would have seen and heard your message again and again. And that's how you're going to help people to understand who you are and what you do as a business. So again, I really recommend you check this out. I'm going to drop a link down below. Take a look at the article by Seth. More importantly, tell us what it is that you're focused on. Tell us what it is that you're going to consistently and patiently turn up and do. We'd love to know about it because we will support you 110%. If it's on Twitter, if it's on Facebook, if it's blogs, if it's going to be videos on YouTube, tell us about it. We'll come along, we'll have a look, we'll check out the content, we'll subscribe. We want to support each and every one of you. So again, on social media, you can hit us up at all about Digmar, D-I-G-M-A-R. So sorry. Um, and we will definitely get involved and we would love to hear what your sort of things you're doing. So stay safe, everybody. Enjoy yourselves. Check out this article by Seth and let us know what it is that you're currently doing. Take care.